Hi everybody, it's Ariel Warren, registered dietitian nutritionist, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and I've had type 1 diabetes for 26 years. That's really hard to say. But yeah, so I am 30. I got it when I was four years old, and I, at a young age I decided to dedicate my life to helping people with diabetes because when I was a kid I always kind of felt alone with it. And so I am a national pump trainer for a tandem, and I also do Omnipod trainings and I work with people of all ages with diabetes and I also work as a dietitian. Today I'm going to go over what you should know about Control IQ and how to get better control using Control IQ with your tandem pump. So first off we're just going to cover the basics so the different settings that you can change which ones you can't change and then I'm also going to talk about my added tips just what I've seen as somebody who has used this pump and also a trainer. First off basal. Basil is the little tiny micro drips of insulin. You know that, you've been on a pump forever, or maybe you haven't, but it is the foundation of your settings. And so if your basil is too high, then it's gonna keep pulling you down all day. You're gonna keep on having to snack. You might have better coverage for your meals because you have better insulin on board, but overall it's gonna keep on making your blood sugar go low. So you're gonna keep on having to eat and treat that, which is actually gonna cause highs because oftentimes we over treat, we go high. So I think of basil as the blanket. If you have a basil that's too aggressive, it's gonna just float everything down. And then if you have something that's not enough, then it's gonna make everything kind of stay high for that segment within your profile. I've seen it often where people are coming from a different pump and they need to decrease their basil just a little bit, but make their correction and carb ratio a little bit more aggressive especially that carb ratio going into a meal so that they have adequate insulin so they don't spike afterwards. As always, work with your diabetes educator and your doctor whenever you're making your setting changes. It's always good to know how these different settings affect your blood sugar, especially managing your diabetes. Nobody knows your diabetes more than yourself, but it's always good to be working with an educator or a doctor that you feel very comfortable with. So correction factor. So with this pump, with the Tandem Control IQ pump, know that this pump does a little bit better. It tends to do a little bit better when the cor correction factor is a little bit more aggressive. But if you see that your blood sugar goes high and it stays high, first off, look at, okay, what caused that high? Was it a carb ratio that wasn't aggressive enough? Was it I didn't count for my carbohydrates adequately? So always trying to address the reason for the high, but know that the correction factor not only determines how much correction bolus that you get, but it also adjusts how aggressive the basal is. So especially for those that are extending the sleep activity and using that all day, the correction factor will determine how aggressive that basal is. And also know that when this pump, when Control IQ gives you a correction bolus, it's going to give you 60% of your calculated needs, but whenever you do a manual bolus, it's gonna give you 100%. I've had a lot of people ask me, well, why when I go to bolus myself, or why when it hits my high alert, it then prompts me to do a bolus? Know that the pump has been adjusting and increasing your basal before you hit that high, and it's giving you correction boluses, 60% of your calculated needs every 60 minutes, but when you reach your your set high alert, that high alert could be at 200, that could be at 400, it doesn't matter where you set it. The pump will then prompt you to give a manual bolus and whenever you give a manual bolus for a correction or you're bolusing at a meal, you'll be able to give 100% of your correction minus of course the insulin on board for past high blood sugar correction. So with the correction factors and carb ratios with any pump, it's an inverse relationship, meaning that one unit brings your blood sugar down this milligrams per deciliter for a correction factor, or with a carb ratio, one unit will cover this many grams of carbohydrates. The lower the number, the more aggressive your settings will be. So for example, a one to 40 is gonna be more aggressive than a one to 50 for a correction factor. And then for a carb ratio, a one to 10 is gonna be more aggressive than a one to 12. Again, I'm always going to say work with your doctor, work with your diabetes educator, but if you ever make your own changes, you can always make small changes to keep safe. And with this pump, you can actually create up to six different profiles. And so what I would do is just keep your main profile and then you can create another profile that just, you can call it trial or whatever you want to call it. 
and then make that small change, try it out, see what you think, and after two to three days of trying that new change, if it's in the right direction, then you can switch your original profile with that new change. Next part is just going over the things that you can't change with this pump. First off, the insulin duration is set at five hours. That is more conservative compared to other pumps. What that means is that if you bolus for a meal at 12 p.m. for lunch, the pump is going to have insulin on board from that meal till 5 p.m. If you have an insulin duration of three hours with a different pump, if you eat at 12 p.m., it's gonna last till 3 p.m. And that is another reason why you may need to change your correction factor just because the insulin duration may be a little bit more conservative. That's just to keep people safe and it's a little bit more accurate of how long insulin actually lasts in your system. So whenever you're trying a new pump, it's gonna be a little bit of a trial period adjusting it to your body and to your routine. The other one that you cannot change is the target blood glucose, the target BG, and that is set at 110. When you first create a profile, you can select different blood sugar, but after you turn control IQ on, you'll get a notification saying you can't change this because you're in control IQ. So what that means is that whenever you bolus, let's say your blood sugar is 160 and your correction factor is 1 to 50, you don't have any insulin on board, and the target is 110, that means that it's gonna give you one unit of insulin to bring your blood sugar down from that 160 down to the 110. And then if you eat carbohydrates, it'll also give you additional insulin to cover those carbs. So those are my basics on how this pump works so you can better understand how to fine tune the right settings for you. And of course, work with your doctor or your diabetes educator to keep safe. If you ever make your own changes, keep them very small. And it's always good to have that trial profile. If you'd like to connect with me about diabetes or nutrition, my website is arielwarren.com. And you can also find me on Instagram at arielwarrendiabetes.